around four minutes, Mr Kerr. Presiding officer, um, can I thank Jackson Carlaw for a powerful and memorable speech, probably the best speech that I've ever heard delivered in this chamber as a member. Now, I've been a, a member of the Conservative Party since I was 15, and uh, you develop a strange emotional attachment uh, to the party that you belong to for nearly 50 years. And in and out of government, our party has had its finest and not so finest moments, and that's politics. But what happened in the early hours of the 12th of October 1984 wasn't politics. It was the attempted mass murder of ordinary members of the Conservative Party and a terrorist attack aimed at killing the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. It was a shocking assault on people, people like us, people like those of us who attended the Conservative Party conference last week in Birmingham. Now, I wasn't at the 1984 conference. My first Conservative Party conference was in 1977, but I wasn't at the 1984 conference because Yvonne and I were new parents, and I was still a st student at Stirling University. But that morning, we watched breakfast TV transfixed at the horror that was before us. Breakfast TV in 1984 was still a new thing. And they were on air providing us live pictures of the rescue of the survivors from the bombed building. As has been said, the front of the Grand Hotel had been blown completely away. And among the ruins, we watched on television and has been referenced, Norman Tebbett being carefully extracted from the wreckage. Fred Bishop, the fire station officer on duty that night, was handling the slow descent of Norman Tebbett's stretcher. Famously, Norman Tebbett cried out at one point, get off my bloody feet, Fred. But Fred Bishop, a man of uncommon character, chatted with Tebbett about flying in the midst of all of this. Tebbett had been a pilot. He'd also been an official of, of Balpa. And he and, as, as Fred and the others tried to bring Tebbett down the floors of the, the hotel, there was an imminent risk of collapse. Tebbett wasn't told and didn't know how gravely his wife had been injured. Now, we already knew, particularly those of us who were active Conservatives, about Margaret Thatcher's formidable courage and conviction. I believe she's a historic figure for all times. She was asked live on TV by the BBC political editor John Cole if the conference would go ahead, and she swivelled around. And facing John Cole, she spoke slowly and deliberately and said, the conference will go on as usual. And as if to make her point, she repeated it. John, the conference will go on as usual. And there have been references already in this debate to what she said later that day in her conference speech. The wreckage of the nearby Grand Hotel still smouldering, the dead and injured still being identified and tended to. And I conclude, if I may, with an extended quote from what she said. The bomb attack on the Grand Hotel earlier this morning was first and foremost an inhuman undiscriminating attempt to massacre innocent, unsuspecting men and women staying in Brighton for our Conservative conference. Our first thoughts must be at once for those who died and for those who are now in hospital recovering from their injuries. But the bomb attack clearly signified more than this. It was an attempt not only to disrupt and terminate our conference, it was an attempt to cripple Her Majesty's democratically elected government. That is the scale of the outrage in which we have all shared. And the fact that we are gathered here now, shocked but composed and determined, is a sign not only that this attack has failed, but all attempts to destroy democracy by terrorism will fail. Deputy Presiding Officer, the lesson of Brighton to those of evil intent, those who trade in horror and the work of death for their own ends is simply put. All attempts to destroy democracy by terrorism will fail. Our resolve must remain to that end.